Welcome to the Parenting ADHD Peer Support Group for Parents and Caregivers of ADHD Children, hosted by the ADHD Empowerment Meetup Community and the nonprofit Children and Adults with ADHD, or CHAD for short, of San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles. I'm Suzanne Sophos, our Executive Director and today's facilitator, along with my co-host Don Lenowski. Don and I are both parents of ADHD kiddos and have ADHD ourselves. Parenting a child with ADHD challenges every aspect of our lives. Seven years ago, we created this group as a safe space to educate ourselves about ADHD and discuss the difficulties and successes of parenting our ADHD children. Many of us arrived because we were at the end of our ropes, struggling and feeling alone as we navigated parenting our high needs children. Together, we've created a community of parents who understand one another's struggles. We're so glad you're here. If you're new, please let us know in the chat so we can all welcome you. As a nonprofit, our only agenda is to provide evidence-based education and peer support opportunities to the ADHD community. This group is just a part of our nonprofit service to the ADHD community. We also host other support groups, including one for adults with ADHD and another for teen women, as well as a monthly expert series called Understanding ADHD, where we bring in ADHD professionals to educate and answer your questions. This year, we're also hosting a weekly media book discussion meetup that's also open to parents. There's never a fee to attend our events. We want to ensure that everyone who needs ADHD education and support can receive it, regardless of finances. However, we are a nonprofit, and our ability to serve the community depends solely on community donations. So if you're able and you find our work worthwhile, we hope you'll consider making a $5 or $10 donation today to support our work. Here are a few guidelines to help you get the most out of the meeting. To let us know you'd like to speak, use Zoom's raise hand feature. Generally, we'll call on people in the order that hands were raised. Please keep yourself muted until you've been called on. Use the chat feature. It's encouraged even when people are talking. It's a great way to get to know other members and share your thoughts, questions, or resources with other, with other attendees. Please just keep your chat respectful and ask consent before direct messaging other attendees. We ask that you respect the confidentiality of who attends and what is shared in the group. Respect and support one another. That's why we're here. It's everyone's responsibility to make the group a safe place. If you're quiet, we encourage you to step up and contribute. If you speak a lot, consider taking a step back. When you have the urge to give advice, remember to speak from your own experience about your own truths using I statements like I feel or in my experience, rather than telling others what you think they should do. Lastly, it's a-okay not to speak. So much can be gained just by listening. Before we dive in, we'll start with a short evidence-based overview of what ADHD is and how it impacts individuals. ADHD is a lifelong neurobiological condition. It impairs the brain's executive functions as well as delays social emotional development. Executive function skills, which I'll explain more in more detail in just a sec, are vital for getting anything done. So all this leads to the hallmark ADHD challenges, trouble self-regulating and trouble self-managing. Individuals with ADHD can veer toward hyperactive or inattentive or be a mix of the two. For people with ADHD, getting our bodies and our minds to cooperate and serve up just the right amount of attention, focus, and effort for the task at hand can be extremely challenging. Studies show that if ADHD is not diagnosed and well-treated, the related challenges can significantly decrease life expectancy by up to 13 years. However, in children, studies also show that life expectancy and outcomes are drastically improved by three things a proper diagnosis, a lifelong holistic treatment plan, and parents who are well-educated about ADHD and how to parent their ADHD child. ADHD impacts every area of our lives, so it makes sense that proper treatment should also touch multiple areas of our lives. So a holistic or whole body treatment plan includes a combination of ADHD education, skills training, medical treatment, and peer support. For children, the Academy of Pediatrics recommends parent behavior training as a primary treatment for children with ADHD in conjunction with, medical, with medication management. 
As parents of ADHD children, it's important that you're aware that ADHD is a highly heritable condition. So if a child has ADHD, there's a very good chance that at least one parent does as well. I want to expand just a little on the brain's executive functions, which are both delayed and impaired in individuals with ADHD. These functions are what help individuals manage and regulate their planning, decision-making, learning, judgment, emotions, and actions. So if your child is doing something, they're using their brain's executive function skills. There are several executive functions, which you can see on the screen in this model based on the work of Dr. Thomas E. Brown, and they come online at different times and in different combinations, depending on what our child is trying to accomplish. For instance, the combination for writing a paper might be very different than the combination for playing outside. For our ADHD children, their ability to use their executive functions at the right time in the right combination and in the right amounts for the task they're trying to accomplish is a process that's impaired. This leads to challenges in the areas listed on the left-hand side of your screen. Children with ADHD are two to three years behind in their executive function age and social emotional development. Executive function development continues until sometime between the ages of 20 and 29, at which time our children will max out in these skills behind their neurotypical peers. Although their executive function is impaired and delayed, it can still be strengthened and developed, even through adulthood. You can think of these skills as if they were muscles. So along with medication or other treatments, receiving executive function coaching, occupational therapy, or helping our children create systems for how they can accomplish things like bedtime or morning routines can be key ways to strengthen their executive function skills. Here's today's agenda. We'll start with a speed round to quickly introduce ourselves, limiting ourselves to one minute each. If you'd like to introduce yourself on camera, please use the raise hand feature now to let us know, or you can choose to go ahead and type your introduction in the chat now. After introductions, we'll provide a bit of ADHD education before beginning a moderated discussion about today's education or any, anything that's going on in your family's life that you'd like some support with. For this week's education, we'll be continuing a series by Ryan Wexelblatt, also known as the ADHD Dude, called Scaffolding, Better Behavior, and Self-Confidence. Let's get started.